There you go. I can't tell. I'm more focused on the video. Hi, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the T-Rex Arms Ragnarok holster. But before we get into the review itself, let's get our full disclosure out of the way. No, I am not either working at or have an affiliate with T-Rex Arms. I am just somebody that believes that T-Rex Arms is a good company and they're trying to just help the gun industry in total overall. And I like what they stand for. So I'm going to be truthfully honest with this review and give my actual honest opinion. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. So the Ragnarok is an outside the waistband holster that usually people would put on like a belt rig or whatever. You can't see it out of shot right now, but I do have my duty belt on. As you can see in some of the B-roll that I'll put in here, you'll see my belt rig. But anyway, it is an outside the waistband holster that is just friction based retention. It's not really held in by anything else other than just the Kydex, it's just Kydex holster that's being friction based by screws. That being said, it does have pretty good retention. This is a Glock 17, the one from the video. It is clear, I don't have anything in it. Safety first. It does have pretty good retention. Again, I'm just holding on to the Safari Learn fork. It's not coming out. So it does have good retention. I'm not gonna say it's the best retention. And honestly, that's one thing lacking in a Kydex retention based holster is you don't have like a secondary means. Obviously you could like add a band over the top if you wanted to to make it secure more like a level one or a level two. I haven't done that because this is just more of a on the range belt holster I mean on a range holster and it's kind of just an intro holster and that's what I would recommend this holster honestly for if it is just a intro holster like your first holster I say you can't go wrong with it. So some other things that you might be considering if you're new to the gun industry or airsoft, you could get an Amazon special $20 holster. This is non light compatible. I think they make light compatible ones. I honestly don't remember the brand. Also, I haven't worn this in probably over a year. The main reason I haven't worn it in over a year, when you put the handgun in and you draw, you have to click this little button here as you come out. You could possibly get your finger in 
on the trigger and possibly discharge around. I obviously don't want that, so I recommend these mainly just for airsoft, because if you shoot a BB into yourself, it's gonna hurt for a little bit, but nothing bad. But anyway, then obviously you have other types of holsters, like this is a Blackhawk, right? Blackhawk. Okay, I'm like, I'm talking to my cameraman, this is his. It's uh, where it's a retention based, so you can't pull it out. You have to push, there's a little button on the inside here. I don't know if you can see it. You have to push that, which then releases the hood, and then you can pull it out. This is also unloaded. So back to the Ragnarok at hand. As I said, it's kind of just like an intro holster. You can use all of your firing line attachments. In fact, this is a QLS fork, which attaches to an ALS system, which is on a mid-ride. Recommend a mid-ride. It's, in my opinion, the perfect height for if you're at a uh, taller to like kind of an average sized male. If you're a little shorter, you might want something different, but I think a mid-ride is cream of the crop. So some cons, I kind of already touched on it, but you really only have retention based off of three screws and then like grommets. These have already backed out on me kind of once one bit. And I noticed well, in my draws that it was super like quick and fast. I kind of like, there should be some resistance, so to speak. So I know that the holster is actually gripping onto your gun. So I've already had to retighten these down, but that's also possibly could be because I've had to double up on each of mine because my slide, as I've already mentioned, is a little bit thicker since it's an armor cut. So it has to have a little bit more material, but that's kind of a downsize. And also if this is like a duty holster, like if you're gonna like have this in like, and a shit hits the fan or SHTF like scenario, you probably want some form of retention. And I've heard stories where like holsters have basically lost their retention and pistols have gone flying. That hasn't happened to me personally. I've ran, I don't know, mile, I've ran at least a mile in full kit before and my handgun has not came out. And I've owned this for about, uh, about two and a half years probably, maybe two years. It's at least two years. Well, and you've done plenty of hiking. That too. Yeah, we've done a lot of just like walking around and stuff. And again, I haven't had any. I haven't had any issues of, it, of my handgun falling out on me. And as I said, I only had to tighten them up that one time. I would argue that the retention issues, while obviously maintaining <laughs> your weapons is important, mm -hmm. the big thing is the reason you wouldn't use this over another holster is like in your SHTF scenario. Uh, scenario somebody yeah. taking it from you rather yeah, than it yeah. just falling out. Yeah, this is a... This is a good, like, if you're wanting to get in the competition where you don't want to have to defeat another means of something, perfect holster. Absolutely perfect. Um, and they're only about, I think I have one on their website today, they're like 50 or 70 bucks. Like, pretty, like a pretty good, like, deal in my opinion. You can get non-light bearing options too, so if you're getting your SPSA person, you probably don't have a light on your handgun. You know, you don't need to defeat a retention-based thing, just draw and shoot. So I'd say that's good. Again, if you just want to try out like how a mid-ride works for you and stuff, that's mainly what I personally bought it. I'm going to see if a mid-ride worked for me and if I like the QLS fork system and everything. So this is kind of my test, so to speak. And as I said, like for 50 or $70, like pretty much inexpensive. Well, and let's say you want to cheap out and get the Amazon special where it's like 20, 30 bucks. The main difference is speaking as somebody who's bought plenty of Amazon special holsters, Every Amazon special holster, even including that Blackhawk, which isn't an Amazon special in any way. It's a flea market uh, special. Well, yeah, I got it from a flea market for a good deal. But, like, you can show them. I've had to chop on every holster that I've ever bought that wasn't, like, a high-end something like the TRX arms. Where, like, that one, you can see there should be a bunch of plastic where that green uh, plate was. But I had to chop it out because uh, I wanted an optics ready holster. But that's not so much a detriment to the Blackhawk. Blackhawk will make a holster that fits. Oh, yeah fits your gun, and, but and speaking, Yeah, stuff. also speaking of like optic, like availability, every T-Rex holster is optic ready. That meaning like any like optic that you have on, you'll have clearance for it. And like T-Rex has like specifically said like they made all their holsters this way because optics on pistols is like the new big thing. The future is now, old man. Future now, old man. With the times, come on, what are you doing? Bro, you're the old man. Dude, you're older than me. Yeah, but I had to convince you to put a fucking red dot on your pistol.
Yeah, I still have it. <laughs> and? So, again, going back to, like, if you want, like, to start out with something, try to test some stuff out to see if, like, certain things are going to work for you, highly can recommend it. Is it the end-all, be-all holster? No. In my opinion, that's a Safari Land. Insert the serial number system here of Safari Land's naming system. It's kind of stupid, but, like, let's be real. That's how Safari Land probably does it. And T-Rex actually sells a Safari Land holster that I plan on picking up here at some point to kind of retire this holster because this was my duty holster, but due to the shortcomings, as I mentioned, I think I should probably get something with some retention-based stuff in it to actually have like a locking system. And in my opinion, Safari Land is the cream of the crop. So yeah, basically new shooter trying to get into it. I can recommend uh, T-Rex Arms Ragnarok for you. There's also the Iron, Iron Hide, Iron Side, it's kind of like they're even more budgety version of this where like they have a built-in uh belt loop system for it or whatever so if you want to try that out to see if you even like the holster design or whatever for like your needs go be my guest but i wanted a mid-ride because i plan on running a mid-ride because i wanted to build out like a battle belt kit and if that's something that you want to see i was like put it in the comments you might might do a video on that because my battle belt is almost done but yeah final verdict can recommend for a friend Unless they want it for like actual super serious use, think about like a Blackhawk or Safari Land, something with like retention based. Otherwise, I got nothing else for you. Just go out there and train, because if you're not testing your gear, you're not gonna find out what works for you. My name gear. <laughs> Remember, kids, always pull out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>